you know, Hank, you and I talked once before about the process you went through in creating the Gargamel character that we have on the screen. Tell mm -hmm. me about that again, because that was incredible. I always start with a voice, so picking a voice for him was difficult, because there was a lot of different ideas. Uh, I kind of like the... Uh, in the 70s and 80s, there was a generic cartoon villain voice. In many <laughs> cartoons that kind of sounded like this. And I sort of started there. And then I think from using my voice so much, it kind of got gravelier as we <laughs> went along. Um, but some people had the idea that he should be sort of a failed Shakespearean actor. He was actually written from that point of view. And so there was even talk of a British accent. But I sort of kept the mentality of a failed Shakespearean actor, but sort of coming out of this kind of filter. And um, I wanted him to be uh, not always screaming. He's very angry. <laughs> uh, you can't avoid that about Gargamel. But the other way to express uh, anger besides yelling is sarcasm. So I wanted to inject a lot of sarcasm in there for when he can kind of go underneath it. And mostly I felt like he was um, unhappy because he's uh, married to a cat. His primary relationship <laughs> yeah. is with a cat. Which is great, by the way. The race between Gargamel and Ash were, were we, great. We tried to really play that up because I thought there's a lot of comic potential in bickering with a cat as if it was your husband or wife. I'm not sure which in Gargamel's <laughs> case. <laughs> now, it, it's, in, with modern technology, it's now no longer unusual for a lot of actors to have experience working on a blue, in front of a green screen or a blue yeah. screen with an imaginary character supposed to be there. But in Smurfs, you guys aren't just standing there with these imaginary characters. You are picking them up, fighting with them, yeah. engaging with them. What were the challenges of that for you trying to, and how were you able to pull out that kind of performance, maintain that character while doing all this stuff with these imaginary creatures? Yeah, it, it can be challenging uh, playing to essentially nothing, but you know, you get a lot of chances at it. Um, you get a lot of takes, you get a lot of rehearsal, and, and that really is our job. It, description is to, you know, pretend imaginary circumstances and then pretend they're real and go. It's a little more literal in the case of like, you know, talking to a Smurf and picking it up and grabbing it. And, but uh, once you kind of just get past the self-consciousness of it, uh, it's not so hard. In fact, it's preferable to some actual actors I've actually worked with. <laughs> now, uh, I'm going to get you to put your, your salesman hat on just for a second and, and tell us why AMC film goers are going to really love the Smurfs. Um, happily, I can honestly report that it is, it's a lovely, uh, funny, moving family film that has laughs for adults. And as a new father, uh, which I am, I cried twice. I, I'm almost embarrassed to say it watching this movie because the, the Papa Smurf storyline is mm. very moving for fathers. And um, there's a lovely message in the film, but it's also just really fun and... And for nostalgia's sake, it's really fun uh, seeing the Smurfs come back to life in that CGI, uh, beautifully animated way. It, it really lent is. itself nicely to that kind of treatment. Well, Hank, thanks so much. Congratulations on the film. We can't wait to have it on AMC Screens. Sure, my pleasure. Thanks again. Nice to Thank see you. you.